Hey guys, it's Owen from Wrestling Inc. back with another wrestling news roundup. Without any further ado, let's get into today's biggest stories in the world of professional wrestling. Christopher Daniels reportedly informs Marco Stunt of his AEW departure, two reasons cited. Marco Stunt is reportedly on his way out of AEW. As we've noted, Stunt's AEW future has been up in the air after it was revealed that his contract expires in May and he hasn't been on TV in six months now. The speculation continued with Stunt announcing back in January that he is taking indie bookings. In an update, a new report from Fightful Select notes that Stunt received a phone call from Christopher Daniels last week representing AEW Talent Relations and was informed that the company would would not be renewing his contract. It was claimed that Daniels cited budget cuts and a large roster as the reason Stunt's contract is not being renewed. Daniels also reportedly mentioned that creative plans had changed for the Jurassic Express stable. Stunt had been appearing with the AEW World Tag Team Champions Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus in the three-man stable, but he was not used for their big title win earlier this year, and that was seen as a bad sign for Stunt's future. Stunt was also not included in recent Jurassic Express merchandise designs. It was also revealed in this new report that Stunt suffered a concussion in October. He was not booked or given a reason why, but he did make an effort to reach out to the company to get booked in hopes of proving himself for a contract renewal. It was also noted that the split between the two sides was amicable and Stunt's conversation with Daniels went well. It's interesting that Daniels called Stunt about his release just one week after Joey Janela mentioned how AEW had ghosted Stunt. Janela recently confirmed that he is leaving AEW when his contract expires on May 1 and in that same interview he commented on Stunt's situation and mentioned Daniels, quote, I've had times where I've injured people of course, everyone has, Janela said in that recent interview, but once you get that reputation it's hard to break that. I've had a string of bad luck throughout my AEW career and that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back but I don't know because they don't communicate with me. They did the same thing with Marco Stunt, they just stopped talking to him. But I appreciate them, but if you're talent relations, I know Christopher Daniels would love nothing more than to tell me I am no longer with the company, but it is what it is, I am not sad, I am not mad, I am not mad at anyone, I had a wonderful experience. Stunt has not wrestled for AEW since teaming with Fuego Del Sol, for a loss to Sean Spears and Wardlow on the October 4 Elevation episode, which was taped on September 29. His last single match for AEW was a loss to Serpentico on the October 5 Dark episode, taped on September 11. Stunt then worked the GCW Fight Club event on October 9, teaming with Joey Janela for a loss to Starboy Charlie and Chris Dickinson. He also appeared at the World on GCW in January, worked GCW's Don't Tell Me What To Do event late in February, teaming with Janela for a loss to AJ Gray and Matthew Justice, and has made a few other appearances. Seth Rollins says AEW name dropping WWE is quote very tacky and quote reeks of desperation. WWE superstar Seth Rollins says AEW referencing WWE on TV is quote very tacky and quote looks and reeks of desperation. Rollins recently appeared on the sports media podcast with Richard Deitch and compared his recent WWE Smackdown reference to John Moxley, formerly known as Dean Ambrose, to AEW referencing WWE on their programming. Rollins made a reference to Moxley on the January 21 SmackDown episode during a segment with WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns. Rollins pointed to their history as The Shield as justification for the reference and said he heard nothing in response to the name drop backstage. Quote, everyone knows he's part of our history, Rollins said. You can't do Seth and Roman without Dean or Mox. Whatever you want to call him, you can't do it. To ignore that part of our history and to just try and put him aside and focus on Roman and Seth, the focus was Roman and Seth, that was the story, but he's a part of that, so to just ignore that and completely pretend he didn't exist is just silly. I refer to him by that name that he prefers to go by, and so that's where we're at with that. I heard nothing in response to it backstage at all. Rollins later compared his reference to Moxley with how AEW references WWE and various superstars on Dynamite and Rampage. He said he finds the name dropping very tacky and lowbrow and said it looks and reeks of desperation. 
Rollins also said AEW is doing their thing very well, but they have a long way to go to catch up to WWE. Quote, I didn't use the reference to Mox to talk down to somebody. I wasn't trying to diminish anybody's accomplishments. It wasn't like that, Rollins said. He's part of our story. Roman wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for him and I. The other side of that coin is the way that it can be used by one of those guys. They can do whatever they want. I find it very tacky and very lowbrow personally. I think it looks and reeks of desperation and I just don't think it's anything on our television show that we need to go there and talk down about those guys. They're doing their thing. They're doing it very well. We're very happy for them. I am at least personally. Are they at our level? No. They've got a long way to go to catch up to us and that's fine and they know that. They do things differently, but for me, from my perspective, it's just a little step down for us to kind of use it as an insult. That's my perspective on it, but people may not share my opinion. Rollins is set to compete at WrestleMania 38 this Saturday against an opponent to be revealed as Rollins waits in the ring. It's believed that former AEW Executive Vice President Cody Rhodes will be Rollins' opponent as Rhodes has reportedly signed a new contract to return to WWE after his AEW deal expired in February. Tony Storm debuts on AEW Dynamite Tony Storm is now All Elite. Last night's AEW Dynamite from Columbia, South Carolina saw Storm make her debut for the company as the mystery talent that AEW President Tony Khan had been teasing. Storm defeated the Bunny in the first qualifying match for the Owen Hart Foundation's Women's Tournament. AEW tweeted after the match and wrote, quote, Welcome to the team, hashtag Tony Storm is all elite, hashtag AEW Dynamite. Storm requested her WWE release in late December and it was granted. She just became a free agent this week as her 90-day non-compete clause expired on Tuesday. Storm recently launched an OnlyFans account and has been trending on social media for the content she's posting for fans. Storm is the first wrestler to qualify for AEW's Owen Hart Foundation tournaments. The qualifiers will likely run over the next several weeks, as AEW previously announced that the first round matches will begin during the May 11 edition of AEW Dynamite from the UBS Arena in Long Island, New York. The finals of the Owen Hart Foundation men and women's tournaments will take place at the 2022 AEW Double or Nothing pay-per-view, which is scheduled for Monday, May 29 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Dr. Martha Hart will be live at Double or Nothing to present the winners with their trophy, which is being called the Owen Cup. Becky Lynch reveals new look after haircut on Raw. Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch has revealed a new hairstyle just days before WrestleMania 38. As noted, Monday's WrestleMania 38 Go Home edition of WWE Raw featured an angle where Lynch tried to cut Bianca Belair's braid off with a pair of scissors. This backfired and Belair snipped some of Lynch's hair and left her seething in the middle of the ring. In an update, Lynch took to Twitter yesterday afternoon and revealed her new look. Quote, jokes on you, Bianca Belair. I look cool AF. Hashtag WrestleMania, Lynch wrote with two photos. As can be seen with the images on social media, Belair changed her Twitter profile picture earlier this week to a shot of Lynch's hair laying on the mat. She has not responded to Lynch's new look as of this recording. Before revealing the new look, Lynch took to Instagram this week and posted a lengthy warning along with a fan-made video. She wrote, quote, Bianca has tried to take everything from me. First the people, then she scarred my vessel of being that I worked so hard for. Then she tried to take my voice, now my hair. My defining feature, as important as all of these things were slash are to me, they mean nothing compared to my title, my world, my identity, my meaning. If she thought 26 seconds at SummerSlam was embarrassing, she has no idea just how bad hashtag WrestleMania is about to be. Lynch is scheduled to defend the Raw Women's title against Belair during WrestleMania Saturday. What are your thoughts on today's wrestling news roundup? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestling Inc. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon.